Inky Q. Today's video was inspired by a tutorial by Daring Wang, a hand drawn three fish in a pond mandala. If you want to follow along by hand, you can go and check out Daring Wang's video. I've put a link in the description. So, yeah, let's get started. Go to File, Document Properties, and let's set up our properties for this drawing. Display Units, set to Pixels, and let's disable the page border. So uncheck Show Page Border and close Document Properties. First step, let's create a triangle. So go to Create Stars and Polygons. Make sure regu regular polygon is selected. The number of corners is 3. The rounded property is 0 and the random property, randomized property is 0. Click and drag in the canvas and press Ctrl to snap it horizontally. Make sure it's snapped horizontally like that. Then switch to the Select and Transform Objects tool. And also let's go to Object, Object Property, um, Fill and Stroke. Set the fill to Flat Color. Set the stroke to None, No Paint. Then on the Object Size, make the width. Before you set the width, make sure the proportional scaling padlock is locked. Then set the width to 140 pixels. Make sure that's pixels. And scroll and control scroll to align the triangle to the center of the screen. And let's also set the opacity to about 50%, something like that. Next, we're going to create three circles with their centers aligned to the corners of the rectangle of the triangle. So let's create the first circle. Control. Press Control and drag. The circles are under the Create Circles and Ellipses tool. So click and drag while pressing Control to create a perfect circle. Switch to the Select and Transform Objects tool. Then let's set the width. Now before we set the width and height, let's set the stroke style to 1 pixels. Make sure stroke paint is set to flat color. Stroke style, let's put it at 10 pixels. Fill, remove it, and we'll have a circle that looks something like this. Then set the width to 150 pixels. So the width and height will be 150 pixels. Then come over to Enable Snapping, make sure that's enabled. Also enable snap nodes, paths, and handles. Make sure snap cusp modes is is enabled and also snap smooth nodes and snap object rotation centers, items rotation centers. Then click and drag until the circle snaps to the corner of the triangle. Control D to duplicate it. Click and drag it to the next corner and it should snap and the two circles should over overlap neatly like that. Control D to duplicate again and make sure the center of the circle 
snaps to the corner of the triangle like that, you'll get a message, object rotation center to cusp node. All right, after creating the three circles, next thing we need to do is create a larger circle that is tangential to the, all three of the circles and has the same center as the triangle. So first we need to get the radius of that circle. So let's get our Bezier tool. Come over the Bezier tool and click on the center of the triangle to snap it to the center. Then click on the corner of the triangle to snap it to the corner and press enter and we want to get the length of this line so let's switch to the select and transform tool click on the line to enable the rotation handles then click and drag the rotation handle while holding the control key so that it snaps horizontally like that then we'll get this width 80.829 so select that width and copy it Control c on your keyboard to copy or just remember remember it by head i do that sometimes so 80.829 we've got that length and we also know that the radius of this circle, if we switch to the circles and ellipses tool, is 70 pixels. So we'll want the length of this line, 80.829 plus 70, is the radius of the circle we want. So let's click on one of the circles, Control D to duplicate it. and then switch to create circles and ellipses come to the rx property on the circle and put plus 80.829 press enter and do the same on the ry value plus you can also Control V to paste that value in the recopied and press enter. Then switch to the select and transform tool. Click and drag until it snaps onto the center of the triangle like that. Now we have our pond and we have our three guides for our three fish. So we can delete the line we created to get the radius and now let's concentrate on this circle on the right we're gonna get the shape of our first fish kind of done so let's come over to this circle double click it and then on this handle click and drag like this on the circle handle and click and drag on the other side till you have a shape like that now when, once you've got a shape like this you want to come over into the circle properties and on the start value enter the nearest value that's a multiple of 15. So in this case, the closest multiple of 15 to 240 is 240. And then on the end value, that will be 90. So that's the angles here. This is 240 degrees, and this is 90 degrees if you're rotating from here. So the circle starts at 240, goes round over to 90 degrees. 
you're going to do the same for this circle. Start it. over here somewhere and over here so that will be 120 and 330 like that now we want to create another line one more line here that goes from here to here so that will be 330 and 90. So let's click on the main large circle. Control D to duplicate it. Then let's put the start value of 330 and end value of 90. Like that. And the type of circle, let's put it as an open or unclosed shape like that. So let's switch to the Select and Transform Objects tool. And just to show what we've got so far, I'm going to select the three circles that we've worked on. So that's the arc we've just created, this arc, and this arc. And I'm just going to pull them aside like that. So you'll have something like this. And control Z to put them back. Then we want to create an arc one step smaller. So I'm going to click on this arc. Control D to duplicate it. Double click and on Rx, let's put 20 less, so that will be 50 instead of 70. So 50, and the same on Ry, that will be 50 again. And then you can see it snapped to the center. And we'll do the same on the large pond arc. Control D to duplicate it. Then come over here to Rx and you can use the minus 20 tab to switch to Ry and make sure the text is deselected then minus 20. To deselect just press an arrow key so that it goes to the end or press your end key also that will work and press enter and you can see here at the bottom it's going a bit too far here we'll use on this on this part on the, on this end oops i created a circle let me control z to undo that on this end the values will be a bit arbitrary and you'll see uh, we're going to clean that up so next circle is this one so this one, instead of decreasing, we're going to increase the value by 20. So let's duplicate that. Control D to duplicate. And that will be 70 plus 20 will be 90. And RY also 90. And we want to start here, which is 300. And here, this will be an arbitrary value. We'll clean that up later. So let's just put 300 on the start position. And the end position, we'll fix it later. Control D to duplicate. The outer arc. And then minus 20. So yeah, we're just going to be repeating these steps. Minus 20. Same here. Control D. 30. 30. Control D. 
110 here we're increasing and 110 like that control d 10 and 10 control d 90 and 90 oops no not 90 that was wrong it's going to be 90.829 so let's uh, copy that 0.829 control c and bring it here control v make sure this is 90 point eight two nine yeah this this is a tedious challenge but the end result is worth it so just stick there uh control d and this time one hundred and thirty one three zero like that all right so let's clean up these arcs now come and drag the handle all the way to somewhere here this handle to somewhere here this handle to somewhere here this handle here something like that so we've got the shape of our first basic fish so let's control and scroll to zoom in to the smallest one then let's switch to the select and transform tool click on this arc and shift and click on this arc and let's go to path stroke to path make sure it's stroke to path and once you've done stroke to path let's control d to duplicate them and then we want to get this diamond shape so this shape here the darker part go to path intersection and we've got this diamond shape here and let me just put it back control z to undo that move then select the right arm and the left arm click and click on this one also shift click to select both of them control d and control minus that will subtract so instead of control minus you can also go to path difference and I will subtract this one, this arm, from this arm. So we have this section at the top and the nose at the bottom. So let's double click the, the arm. And that will take us to the edit paths by nodes tool. This tool here. And I want to click and drag over the bottom nodes these nodes here shift and drag over those and then press the delete button to remove them switch to the select and transform objects tool and we'll be left with just the upper part this part next we want to get this part here so to do that click on this arm, control D to duplicate it, and then onto the right arm, control D to duplicate it. So we want this arm to be on top, that's why we duplicated it the top. The last created item is what goes on top. Then shift and select the left arm and Control minus will go to path difference. 
and then we'll get the left arm with the middle part removed. So switch to edit paths by nodes and then click and drag or you can double click on the path to come to this tool and click and drag over the nodes on the right and delete and switch to select and transform objects now we have this so you want to join this one the diamond shape and this arm on the right so the left one diamond shape and the right arm so shift click on this one then shift click on the diamond click on the right arm and control shift plus either do that or go to path union and that will join the three together like that then come to the circle and for the circle I'm going to need the circle later so I'm going to duplicate it before I turn it into a path Control D to duplicate it double click and let's set the start and end to zero zero and zero switch to the select and transform tool control and scroll down to zoom out click and drag and let's bring it here so that it's out of the way for now then let's continue editing so click on the arc that we have the smallest arc come to path stroke to path then shift and click on our arms and control shift plus to join them together so now we have oops I clicked on the one of the arms that was that we were using as guys we can delete these arms and delete this other arm so now we have this kind of a curved teardrop shape and I'm just going to press Control Z to undo the move and yeah that's what we're going to be doing for a bit of time so I'm just going to speed up the video from here for the repetitions of this let's go through this one together it's pretty much the same as the first one so first let's path stroke to path control D to duplicate it uh, oops I just saw something it's not quite overlapping here I want to control Z and undo the stroke to path Double click, Control Z. Once you've got your stroke back, um, well, I don't, I um, yeah, it wasn't quite overlapping, so it make sure it's overlapping, and you've got your diamond shape here. Right now, once once that's done, now we can select both of them. So switch to the select and transform tool, shift and select both of these arms, come over to path, object to path, control D to duplicate them, then 
Shift Control Star to get your intersection. Oops, what did I do? Did I do object to path? Control Z. Control Z. Alright. X. On this one, shift and select. And then let's do that stroke to path. And then Control D to duplicate, and Shift Control Star to get the intersection of these two shapes, the intersection of the two arms. Then click and Shift click, and Control D to duplicate them again. Control minus to subtract the top one from the bottom one. Double click on the right arm, click and drag to remove the bottom nodes. Then escape twice and then control D to duplicate the left arm and control D. Click on the right arm and control D to duplicate it. Shift and click on the left arm. Control minus to remove the right arm from the left one. Double click on the left arm. And let's select the nodes of the left arm and delete them one by one. And this one until we're left with the nodes from just the top part. Switch to the Select and Transform tool. Select the arm, the diamond shape, and the right arm. And then union those. Control Shift Plus. Come over to the arc here. And the shortcut for stroke to path is Control Alt C. So we can do that too. Control Alt C. Then Shift, select the arms, and Control Shift Plus. And we'll get another teardrop shape like that. A curved teardrop shape. Control Z to undo the move again. Delete the arms or the guides for the arms and as for the outermost arcs, those will be straightforward. It's just uh, converting them into strokes. So the arc, this arc, left arc and the pond arc. Those three arcs. Convert those. So control Alt C. Then control Shift Plus. And I can click and drag. Oops. That's not what I wanted. Control Z. Let's click on this arc. Click and drag. And this is what I wanted to see. So you'll have a shape like this. Control Z to undo the move. Then let's get our small circle. This one. Control. Well, no control to. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's drag it and snap it onto the corner of the triangle. You might need to zoom in. To snap it to the corner of the triangle. So object rotation center to cusp node like that. Then I think we can delete the circle, the main circle. So delete that. 
because it might be getting in our way later. And we can also delete this circle. Delete that. And click the small circle and our fish, our first fish. Press Ctrl D to duplicate them. Click on the selection one more time to enable the rotation handles. Click and drag on the rotation handle and press Ctrl so that it snaps at 15 degree intervals and when it snaps on 120 let go of the mouse button and control and then click and drag until the small circle snaps onto oh whoops I forgot something let's go back control Z control Z control Z we want to combine all the teardrop shapes. So this one, this one, this one, and the outermost. And control shift plus to combine them all into one shape. So now they're all one shape like that. Control Z. And now let's come and shift select tiny circle. Control D to duplicate. Click again to enable the rotation handles. Click and drag while pressing Control. And snap at 120 degrees. Click and drag and snap the center onto the cusp node of the triangle. Control D to duplicate again. Click and drag the rotation handle. Hold control, snap it at 120, click and drag and snap it onto the corner of the triangle like that. And it looks like we're done. Well control and zoom in, click on the triangle. Delete it. Let's click and drag over everything to select everything. And come to our fill and stroke. And let's crank up the opacity to full opacity. And lastly, let's union those. So Control Shift Plus or go to Path Union. Whoops. I forgot one step. Control Z, which was to delete the small circles. So select on each of the tiny circles and delete them. Delete. And delete. You can keep them, I don't know. Uh, whichever works for you. I prefer not to have them. But yeah, that's, that's it. And then click and drag over everything. And control shift plus. And there's your three fish in a pond. Mandala. That was a bit of a challenging exercise, but uh, the end result is totally worth it. Yeah. Files I created in this exercise are available in the description for download. And I hope you enjoyed this, I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in the next one.